Right then, today we've got this uh, Panasonic Quintrix. Uh, it's 25 inch model. What is it? Uh, TX25MD4. TX25MD4. Um, it uses a Euro 4 chassis. Um, it's my brother's telly. He bought it new in about 1998, I think. And uh, let's see what fault is on it. Oh. And stand by. It's off. Turn it on. I've sort of got an idea of what it might be, um, so I want to see if, if my uh, suspicions are correct, and if if they are, it shouldn't be too difficult to fix, I think. So we'll get back off it and have a look, and I'll get the uh, circuit, and I'll show you what I think what I'm thinking it is. <clears throat> right, this is a section of circuit for this chassis. Um, this is microcontroller and there's a couple of protection pins on it you got there's pin 75 uh, which is prop 1 and then there's prop 2 and prop 3 that don't they're not connected to anything I don't think and then there's this V prop uh, which goes off to a different bit um, it comes to it goes to this here um, which what this is, this V-Sync, um, which comes from frame chip, uh, which I think it's a f feedback from the, uh, well it's the, the vertical, uh, you know, the deflection, it's feedback from that, it's uh, buffered by this transistor and rectified by this diode here filtered to form so it forms a DC voltage so that's kept charged all, all the time by this uh, you know by our power supply would work you know um, that's kept charged up and keeps this eye um, if one of these goes low I think that's what's going to um, make it go back into standby in protection mode. So I think it's going to be if I if I probe these, I think I'm going to find that one of them's uh, going low, and I think it'll be this V prop because it doesn't look like there's any uh, frame. Like there's no vertical deflection, I don't think. Um, I'll show you other. This is prop one. These are uh, different rails generated by power supply, and they're all connected through a diode to this transistor here. Um, which is connected to this 5 volt standby 5 volts which means that if any of these drop lower than 
but it's going to be like 4.3 volts of diode drop lower than 5 volt power supply then that diode will conduct like say it's this 8 volt rail if that goes drops below uh, 4.3 that diode's going to turn on pull this down which will turn on this PMP transistor uh, current will flow that will go up which will turn on this transistor which will pull that prop one down um, but I don't think it is that it might be but I think because of that uh, because it, it looks like there's no frame it's hard to tell but when you turn it off like there's a really bright line in the middle of the middle of the screen I think I think it's like it's been beams being blanked I think but uh, and then it's just getting turned off so this is uh, frame chip and it's this here from this pin 7 um, it's uh, connected to that full capacitor and uh, through this, this capacitor here, this, this resistor it says VFLB but I think all that is it's that V-Sync but that goes through a that VFLB goes through an 100 ohm resistor in another bit of circuit that I haven't printed out and then it's called V-Sync so I think I'll test I'll, I'll check this uh, V-Prop pin and I think it'll be low um, and I think if there had been some uh, some sink, some you know uh, a frame, then I would have maybe suspected something around here, or or one of these components. I mean, it could be that, but I think it's going to be somewhere around that frame chip that's causing no frame and got and putting it into protection mode so I'll check around there as well this is prop one that's five five bolts so it's not power supply so it's probably going to be this V-prop then. When we get to that pin, um, we just that. So what I've done is I've soldered a little wire to it and wrapped it round and meter. So I'll try it again now. Yeah, well, don't go high. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, this is that line comes, this is where it originates from. So I'm going to just test here and see if, uh, this is with scope, see if we've got a signal. Because if there's no, if there's something coming out of there, but that's still, but obviously that's low, then we know that problem's somewhere in between <clears throat> right I've connected it up with a wire again um, it's hard to get to from top. Um, 
so this is this should be about minus 15 hmm didn't at all This should be 15 volts. Well, it's sort of it's in the right area. Better than that other one. Right, so this is where that uh, negative rail for, for that frame chip comes from. It's off a winding at line output transformer through this resistor. You've got this diode rectifier uh, and a smoothing a reservoir capacitor there. So I'll check here, and if we haven't got it there, then I'll check these components. I'm going to test it at the at the uh, anode of this diode that's just going mad in it Four hundred and sixty eight. So it is the same down there. <clears throat> well, let's check this diode. Looks like that diode's gone short. Look at that. See that? Short. Yeah. <coughs> so it's either either that die out or that capacitor has gone short. It's a bit diode. I don't know what type of diode it is. 1SR124 dash 4AT82. It's a funny looking little thing. I'll have to look up. Right, I had a look at um data sheet for that diode and it were a fast recovery one. And I put in what I hope is uh, a suitable replacement which was a FR103, I think it were. Um, yeah, FR103, fast recovery rectifier. Ah, I got that off the of, uh, I found this old smashed up TV chassis. Uh, on the street one time and I just took it home it's like this smashed up circuit board so I thought oh, there'll be some decent parts on there I knew it would come in handy one day so 
pull it back in and see what happens. Hopefully that might be it fixed. No. I think we're getting there though. I'll test this voltage anyway. Um, and see if we are, just make sure that we are now getting right voltage. So I'm thinking I've replaced that, that's alright. So assuming this line output transformer is alright, it's got to be this on it, that resistor. If that's gone open circuit, then that'd explain it. Right, this is that resistor here, should be 0.33. Ohms. Get to it. One point eight. I'm not sure in some else on there. I'm measuring the wrong one. It's this one. And it is. You see, it is indeed open circuit. Definitely got one of them. Third of an arm. Says half a watt on a uh, thing, but like three watts or some of the ones that I've got. Sort of thing that you'd use in the output of a amplifier. Let's have a look. Three three ohm. Stick that in, and uh, see what happens. Right, got the new uh, resistor in. Let's fire it up. And that's a working telly. It 
it is on a nice big screen full of snow. Right, I'll put it back together and uh, I'll see if I can find a video signal to stick through. Look at that then. Station on it because I ain't got a uh, media player to put a test card on. Eh, not a bad picture. A bit dark. Eh, I'm happy with that. Eh, I'm pleased with that. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Alright, just a quick update on this tally. Uh, I've got back off again because uh, on looking at the uh, the service manual a bit, that resistor that I replaced, it wants to be a safety safety resistor, like a fusible resistor, um, I think, which makes sense uh, to so it'll fuse and cut the supply to to that chip if that diode goes so that you're not feeding AC to the frame chip um, so I've replaced it um, I know just another bit of interest the, uh, the tube I think is uh, actually a Philips one, even though it says Panasonic on it. This lay black and white label uh, means a Philips tube, where the, the Panasonic, I think some of them had Philips tubes and some had Panasonic. The Panasonic one's got a blue, I think it's a blue label with, with white writing on it, or other way around. Oh, uh, yeah. But it's still going well. It's um, pictures a lot better now after it's been run for a bit. It brightened up and uh, got more crisp and sharp. And I've uh, been running it for a while, and yeah, it's looking good.